And here we are, Grand Prix Portland semifinals. We are in the last two rounds of the tournament. Zvi Moshevitz, Hall of Famer on the right-hand side of the screen versus Joe Demestrio. Zvi's on the play. And uh, as you can see, he's playing the Robots Affinity deck here, and he has been a master with this deck all day. Passes the turn back after playing a Mem Knight and a Signal Pass. Zach, what are we looking at here from Joe? Uh, we are looking at a very innovative Scapeshift deck featuring four copies of Primeval Titan, Ooh. which was the original way to abuse Valak at the Molten Pinnacle. Yep. A lot more basic mountains in this version of the deck, so we're not going to see him run into any of that trouble of like, oh, do I have enough mountains left mm -hmm. in my deck to Scapeshift? Yep. Like we, uh, like we saw several times. Also, four main deck pyroclasms. Wow. Absolutely devastating. What if he has one like right here? If he's got one here, that is going to be devastating as V, I believe, has had a chance to see the uh, the deck list, but even then he has played three creatures out, all of which died a pyroclasm, yeah, and right when is. I say it, there it is. Joe may have showed up with the best deck to this tournament. I mean, you've got a great combo kill. You've got a reasonable amount of disruption in Is It Charm and Remand. You have Prismatic Omen to me make it so that you can combo out a lot faster. Mm -hmm. You have Primeval Titan to for added redundancy, so you're not just trying to force th through Scape Shift. And you have a really effective sideboard against essentially anything you're up against. I think uh, I'm really liking Joe's choice today. You wow. know, we see a lot of the decks that are popular. Um, oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah, I was just going to mention that, that, that Joe was going to miss a land drop here so uh -huh. he's is it charming to draw two discard to so you know a mode that isn't used that often on is it charm he he's digging okay go ahead he is digging he's uh you know he discard two he can play a land he can suspend a search for tomorrow probably discard the other one but i uh i, I think you know we've seen a lot of pod decks at the top of the tables mm -hmm. we've seen a lot of affinity decks yep Pyroclasm rips through oh those cards. Man, so efficient. Dude. Shreds, and even against the mid range deck, it still kills Dark Confidant at yes. parity. Yes. It kills uh, Death Ride Shaman. Yes. You know, I, I mean, wow. the card is really well positioned. Wow, right yeah, now. that's insane. Four main deck uh, Pyroclasms doing tons of work here for Joe. He has a powerful end game. And uh, you mentioned it earlier, he's playing Primeval Titan, which is also just a nice endgame in and of itself. Yeah, it's a right. tough creature to deal with. Yeah. It deals a lot of damage, and it uh, sets up a combo kill, too. All right, so Sfi's last turn was very unimpressive. He activated Blink Moth Nexus and attack. That's yeah, it. Uh, deal, deal his damage. He did a damage. So let's see what he has here. He's got double Darksteel Citadel, Citadel and a Blink Moth. So, I mean, he plays he another Blink Moth. He can attack for two, I guess, by uh, pumping Blink Moth with the other Blink Moth. Um, yeah, I mean, so, like, you know, he is ticking Joe down to 12. Joe, pretty light on the instant speed removal. He's only got three copies of Is It Charm, one of which he used already. So, uh, actually a little bit challenging for him to deal with those uh, Blink Moth Nexus. Uh, he's he is at 12. He is at 12. His life total is being threatened in some way, but he does have some breathing room here to do some big, powerful things. He's got that uh, search for tomorrow. Uh, is going to become active next turn. It looks like he's casting another one right here. Yeah, and I mean, he's, he's going to go get a land. His next search for tomorrow coming in uh, next turn. So, I mean, if he draws a land, he can still cast Primeval Titan on schedule. Yeah. Actually, a little bit ahead of schedule. A little ahead of schedule, yeah. but yeah. <laughs> Let's see what he's got. If he has any other plays. No other plays this turn. So, he is just uh, developing his mana base while he does have that breathing room. So <laughs> I mean, V just, uh, yeah, tons of lands, has another Glimmer Void and Moxes, but I mean, I mean the Blinkmon Nexus plan is not that bad. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure he wishes that he could get <laughs> a little bit more of a punch going. Anything, oh, I mean, a of cranial course. plating or something would be really sweet, yeah. although even then it wouldn't, I guess, it, it would it would quicken the clock a bit. I, but, I mean, uh, that's kind of what turn. you're trying to do, I think, is just get your opponent to within top deck of cranial plating range. Uh-huh. You know, and uh, I mean, that would deal, I think, four if he actually activates cranial. Cranial plating is five, so six from the Blink Moth. So that would be a two turn clock. There's the land that you were talking about, yep. Zach, and we could be seeing Primeval Titan here for the first time in this tournament. There's also a Scape Shift in his hand. Oh, okay. So that just. And is he's game. got it. Yep. All right. So he's got, he's got six lands. And he has Prismatic Omen. What this, what's going to happen is he can bring in all four or however many Valakuts he's playing. Those count as a mountain thanks to Prismatic Omen. And any other lands that he gets count as mountains. Yeah, and he's got three copies of Valakut. Yeah. Whenever anybody does this on Magic Online, the entire screen fills with triggered abilities. Triggers, and yeah, you're like, yep, exactly. that seems like enough. 
So, so Zvi is just like, okay, I need so to. He said, do you want me to make me do it? And Zvi said, yeah, go ahead and do it. So these are all mountains. And uh, Zvi says, are you targeting me or you? <laughs> <laughs> it's, I think, 36 damage is what you get yeah. from that one. Are you targeting me or you? Yeah, just. Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, right, so uh, Moshevitz falls in the first game here to Joe Demestrio. Um, you know, things went on plan for him. He had a bunch of cards in his hand that whole time. He decided he, he, was, he got one power plasm off. He didn't even need to do the other one as he never presented another threat. Uh, one thing about the top eight here is that the competitors do get to see each other's deck lists. Right. We have a couple copies in front of us, but you can see that uh, they're, they're looking right now at what sideboard cards are possible here. Let's take a quick look at the other one. Sam Party on the left, Malira Pod. Another Malira Pod on the other side with Dan McDonald. I'm told he's known as DMAC. 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 Because so on Twitter they said everybody just calls him DMAC. Just calls him DMAC. Yeah. I thought that was Dylan McDonald, who I think is another Magic player somewhere. Oh, okay. Uh, well, they told uh, me it was Many DMACs. Yes. Hey, man, they can, they can fight for who gets to be the real DMAC on Twitter. I agree. Will the real DMAC please stand up? All right. <laughs> so we've got uh, Sack Out and the Revel Arc. Never want to see that on your opponent's side of the board. No, you certainly don't. Um, in the graveyard, a couple of Deathrite Shaman. Uh, there's one other card I can't quite see, and then there's a, a Ranger of Eos that uh, doesn't interact with uh, Revlark in any way. So, uh, <laughs> Sam so Sam's attacking. Getting in the red zone. I think for Dan, you're just like, whatever. I mean, block Trump. I mean, do you just he's at do nine. You not care? I, mean, I don't know. How, or do you know if that uh, Deathrite Shaman's live or not? I mean, uh, it does Dan, not look Dan's live. Dan's going to kill no. him next turn, right, with uh, Malira? Or there is a birthing pod. There is a one drop. There is a viscera seer. I, I guess I can't tell what exactly is in the graveyard. It's possibly just doesn't have a Finx or a red cap. Well, I mean, doesn't Dan still need uh, a persister? Right, exactly. Yeah, but, he, so he needs Malira he and a persister. Right. He, he can, can get, get a Malira easily, yeah. So... So I guess we don't know if he's yeah, just going to untap and kill him or not. But yeah. right now, Sam Party is attacking, and if Revelark jumps in front of either, I he could trade off the creatures for it. Okay. All right, so it looks like Dan took it. He goes to four here. And post-combat, Sam Party plays a murderous red cap, and he's targeting the Deathrite Shaman. Yeah, I mean, I, I think he just wants to uh, wants to prevent Dan from being able to gain some life. I mean, if he attacks with those red caps, no matter what happens, well, I guess he can block with a bird and viscerous here and sack them. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, yeah, I mean, all Sam needs is a sack outlet to you know convert that into two more damage. So, all right, there's a scry. And, uh, <laughs> breathing pod very crucially untapped. <laughs> what are we seeing? Suspense is killing <laughs> you, Marshall. <laughs> is it Court of Calling? Okay, he has a oh persister has a in his oh, hand. Okay. It is Court of Calling as well, though. I he yeah, and then he yeah, does we're need it. Get Malira, and that is going to be and that is going to be it. Okay, so so the reason he didn't want to block the red caps is because he didn't want to lose his viscerous here to uh -huh. the red cap coming back and stopping right. his combo potential. You're right, and so he, he I don't know if he drew the court of calling or if he drew the red cap, but either way, DMAC puts together the combo <laughs> and earns the first game here over Sam Party. All right, back in our original match here uh, on the right hand side is Fimashevitz. He's playing Robots Affinity and uh, Joe Demestrio, who comboed off in the first game. You know. Uh, the combo that he's chosen using Prismatic Omen requires an additional card to go than the right. traditional Scape Shift deck, but it's much more potent and much more resilient when you do get it going. Yeah, and it doesn't need the Prismatic Omen. No. I mean, the Prismatic Omen lets you go off with fewer lands, makes your Primeval Titan better. Also, just like he's playing three Valakuts, most people play two. Mm -hmm. So if you just play a Valakut, yes. and have a, it all of a sudden just turns every land you draw into a bolt. Mm -hmm. It was also really, really sick with uh, with uh, Sack Lands. Mm -hmm. Just play it, deal them three, yep. then just Sack it, yep. and go deal them three again, I think. So, so I mean, uh, you know, the card is just extremely good. A um, little bit w softer to Tectonic Edge. But, uh, you know, it's, it, he can still get seven lands. I mean, he's playing six regular mountains, four stomping grounds, two steam vents. So he has a lot of mountains in his deck regardless. 
they thought you just won the game. Yeah, he's got uh, he's got Omen as well. Yeah, I really like Demestrio's deck. I think it is capitalizing on the field here today very well while not sacrificing very much raw power. I mean, he's got a one-card combo kill in his deck. Right. You know, what more do you want? That's right. So after sideboard, I would expect him to be bringing in Is It Charm to be able to deal with those nexuses. Mm -hmm. He's got one fire spout that I would have to think that he wants. I don't know that he needs any more than that. Uh -huh, dismember? Maybe you bring in You know, it's just those man lands that become a problem, right? When you've got fire spout and pyroclasms, like you're going to kill some of Svi's cards. That's true. I mean, yeah, like remand is not super exciting for you. You might just bring in... Uh, dismember to, to make sure you don't die to a cranial plating on a nexus. Yeah, Remand seems kind of bad. Meanwhile, Zv has got uh, Spell Pierce very good in this matchup. Uh, Blood Moon, I think, very good in this matchup, but maybe not. I makes some all no mountains. Idea. It also makes your Valakut a mountain. Makes your Valakut a mountain, yep. exactly. Uh, and uh, yeah, I think that has thoughts, to be good, thought right? you have to want Thoughtseize, right? Sure. I mean, you know your opponent has a zillion pyroclasms. You probably take out stuff like uh, Signal Pest that is just, you know, like, the last thing you want to do is flood the board with tiny threats. Right. I mean, I think, like, like Spell Skite might not even be that bad. So, so does Sphi's plan morph into more of a situation where he wants to uh, get an S champion down after disrupting Joe's starts with Thoughtseize and or... Uh, you know, a key spell pierce or something. Yeah, I mean, his plan, I think, has to revolve around uh, around champion and, and master of Ethereum. I mean, he, like, you're going to keep in your steel overseer because, like, if you can untap a couple of times, he gets you out of uh, he gets you out of pyroclasm yes. range. I mean, and like, you still need a, a a core of creatures. You know, I mean, you're like, you can't side out. Vault Scourge and Signal Pest and Memnite and Ornithopter. Yeah, absolutely. The reason I think you side out Signal Pest is just it's only good once you've committed a million creatures to the board. Um, uh, but I might be wrong about that. The play might just be to take out Memnite. I, you know, it's it's really hard to say. I mean, four Pyroclasm is not easy to beat when you're an Affinity deck. Right, and. He also has to, you know, spring leaf drum and that kind of stuff doesn't right. do anything if you don't have those those mem knights and exactly. It's going to be a tough balance, I think, for Svi as as you know he does have to respect the fact that he's playing a bunch against of really some of the worst case scenario cards for him. Pyroclasm is a card that he just has to hate seeing. Yeah, yeah. And when your opponent is main decking four, so it's not like he's diluting his deck no, to no, accommodate exactly. these four things. Precisely, that cannot be good for Svi. I mean, on the other hand, I mean, Zvi does have Spell Pierce and Thoughtseize to help fight those Pyroclasms. Mm -hmm. I mean, Thoughtseize is, like, going to be doing some very valuable work. I mean, yep. like, you've, you want to take Scape Shift and Primeval Titan and Pyroclasm yeah. and the Fire Spout that you suspect yeah. Demestro bringing in. So, I mean, <laughs> yeah, really, I think Zvi needs to be casting Thought Casts and getting Etch Champions on the table as quickly as he can. The, uh, the thing Demestrio can't do is remove a cranial plating particularly well. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, certainly Zv has a, has a very val valid plan. He's just got to make sure he sees the right cards. Okay. Curious to see if Zv does, does bring in Blood Moon here. I think you want to. I mean, uh, like, that makes Demestrio kill you with Primeval Titan, and I don't even know how many Primeval Titans he's going to have in after sideboarding. Yeah. You know, I mean, it, like, you want some number of them. I mean, the card yeah. costs how many, six How mana. many forests does he have? He has three, three basic forests forest. and two Misty Rainforests. Yeah, so he so doesn't yeah, have the ability to grab, to grab those that them. often. No, yeah. that's a really good point, actually. Yeah, yeah, he has to have brought in Blood Moon. Mm -hmm. All right, there's an Arcbound Ravager. And another one. another one. Hey. Okay, so he's got some pressure here. I mean, they're not huge right now, but they can get that way. And they are very resilient, too. I mean, they're not going to be... These do not die pyroclasm. to pyroclasm. Well, one will, but yeah. he'll be able to work around it. And if you say, Right, you can sack Arcbound Ravager. I think sacking it to itself actually puts two counters on the other Arcbound Ravager. Is that right? I think it just moves whatever counters were on it. Well, and then plus the get a counter ability of the uh, Ravager. Right. Oh, if you, yes, right. If you do, then it does. So, so he's like, sure. I mean, you know. And he does exactly that. <coughs> so not too bad for Joe. He trades a Pyroclasm for a Ravager, but not... Oh, 
Probably had bigger dreams yeah, for yeah, that exactly. pyroclasm, but you'd take what you can get. So, so now we see double yeah, cranial plating. Double plating cranial inside. plating. So if, if, if Svi can manage to keep that uh, Arcbound Ravager alive, right. the beatdown will begin. That One, yeah, two, three, four, right five. Here. Is that a Mox Opal? So do you go ahead and feed this Opal? Yeah, you, feed, yeah, yeah. you sack it, play it untapped. And uh, theoretically could play another cranial planning, but I think you w you want to make sure to get in this damage. So, so four, it's nine damage here? Five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, wow. Whoa. The Vestro better put something together quick. Turns out Arcbound Ravager was uh, the most powerful card in standard for several years for a reason. Yeah, a quick game. Wow, and so he just shows him the cranial plating, and that's it. Yeah, I mean, he has Edge Champion, he has Arcbound Ravager. We said those are the cards he needs. That's, that's exactly what happened that game. That Ravager just absolutely decimated Demestria. Uh, I did see, by the way, a Blood Moon okay. peeking out there. So he did, he did bring out his Mem Knights. All right, let's click over to D-Mac versus uh, Sam Party. <laughs> D-Mac. <laughs> I think that that's what they call him. I don't know. I, I, I now want to call every, I want to call Sam Party S-Par. S-Par? S-Par. D -d -d -d. He goes by party time. Espar, no. <laughs> Look, man. That, that, right. This is almost as good as coming up with names for that Jund with a Johnny deck. Oh, a, Jund I, a bunch of people did tweet us after you asked, by the way. Oh, yeah. Oh, there's some oh, bad ones. I bet they're I, I mean, they're bad funny, is relative. They're bad, yeah. Hey, man. <laughs> oh, I'm sure that I'm not, I, I would be alone in, uh, in that. <laughs> All right, so there's a thought, see. So the cards you see, the grouping of four there is uh, D Max Hand. Looks like he's got a pod. He's got red cap. Is that what that is? That is not that. I think that's a. Uh, what's a? Uh, I think that's a um, death right shaman, right? Death right shaman. Yeah. Oh, okay. I always just assume if you have a land out that death right shaman's going to be on the battlefield. Yeah, it, lo it looks <laughs> like uh, it was a birds of paradise oh, okay. this time. Yeah. All right. Oh, daddy. Wow. Okay. All right. Four mana to one mana. Kind of where you want to be in a mirror match. Yeah, that's pretty decent for Sam Party as he strips away. Uh, an eternal witness and dismembers a birds of paradise. Right. Yeah, you're exactly right. Death right shaman. All right, there's a death right shaman. So he's he's, so he's, he's back on track, oh but yeah. he's behind now. And uh, you see him take the eternal witness uh, mainly because oh. he's just get back. Oh, dirty! God. Oh, yes. Sam party passes the doing turn. It? Dmax oh, says, doing "I'm going to crack my fetch land." And Sam says, "I will show you my friend Avon Mind Sensor." And it looks as though d yeah. has whiffed. <laughs> Nothing more fun no, in Magic than land really destruction. <laughs> I mean, We have honestly. seen Fulminator Mages. We have seen the get em <laughs> Aven Mind Sensor. Oh, Ooh, man. Yes. If you've ever been on the good side of that Ooh, Aven yes. Mind Sensor shenanigans, it feels really, really good. <laughs> Why win through skill when you can win through luck? <laughs> Look, it took a lot of skill to put that card. It did, in yeah. You know, you had to play it. All you right. had to cancel the right look, card. But yeah, look, Dmax still says, "Look, I've got powering make through a it. kitchen finks here." And uh, Sam all the way down to eleven. I mean, uh, one of the one of the best happening. things about Aven Mind Sensor doesn't affect you. Oh yeah, of no, course. You just get to no, do whatever. Not symmetrical. I'm just gonna censor this guy's mind, right. please. You see that as Sam Party takes his time searching through oh, his yeah. library. Yeah, I, I, he's guy, like just one, two, three, flexing four. Flexing the cards. Pause. Look at how much variety I have. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. <laughs> oh man, what a blowout for D Mac. Right, and you know that card's just a great sideboard card in this matchup anyway right. because it it, it limits yeah. what positively sick against uh, Court of Calling, Court of Calling and, and Birthing and Pod. Birthing Pod, which by the way, Dan McDonald's has has both of those yeah, in, his in his hand. hand. Yeah. It has a pretty, uh, pretty commanding presence from Party right now. Yeah, now and he, he just needs to have that too. Remember, Dmac won the first game. Wait, well, and I mean, like, like he currently does not have an answer to D Dan just like attacking with Kitchen Thinks and activating Deathrite Shaman. Okay, well, it looks like he's gonna buy back. All right, dismember so to kill the Deathrite right, Shaman. Only paying two life this time. That's right. He did tap both of his birds to do that. But, I mean, Kitchen Finks can start doing some work right here. All right, Caw, says the bird. Now, Sam just took it from the Kitchen Finks. He didn't want to trade off his Eternal Witness for it. But Dmax stuck on two lands. And there is a nice one for Sam Party as very, that can eventually start digging him back out here. All right. But he's on the beat down competing front. beatdowns. This is weird. We haven't seen this version of this matchup yeah. yet. It's a race. So, so I mean, like, you can't <laughs> just take two from Kitchen Things here because if Dan plays a land and goes murderous red cap, mm -hmm. you're done. You're dead. 
So, I mean, I, yeah, I think he's going to just toss a bird in the way and say, yep. all right. That's a... Uh, Okay, we're going to jump back over to our main feature match here because uh, if, if Sam manages to win that, we're going to get a game three, but this is already a game three. This is going to determine which one of these two players makes it to the finals, and there you go, Zach. You called it. Look, you'd bring in the Thoughtsies, and a Thoughtsies shows up. All Double right. Is It Charm, Sakura Tribe Elder, a Fire Spout, and then a couple of lands. Now, this, is, this choice is going to depend heavily on what Svi has in his hand. Yeah. And it looks like he has kind of a land-heavy hand, actually. Uh, yeah, I mean, not really very many good targets right here for Zvi. I mean, I think you take Fire Spout and just uh, eliminate his mass removal. Joe really dependent on top decks. You could take an Is It Charm just to like. I mean, he can't sure, even you know, cast it yet. He's got the Sakura Tribe no, Elder. He's going to go get an island with it, but taking Sakura Tribe Elder actually not bad here either. Just depriving Joe of blue mana, yeah. saying, "Okay, you've got Fire Spout. You're not going to do anything else for a while, right? And you're not going to accelerate your mana." Yeah. I mean, because now Zvi knows about Fire Spout and can play around it. That's right. I, and I remember really like taking Tribe Elder. I here. think I do too. Because another thing to remember here is oh, well, that no. Zvi. Okay, he did decide to take that. Is it is it V did bring in at least for game two? I'm assuming he's still here. Blood Moon. Yeah. And so true. keeping your opponent from getting any basics basic at all, land, especially yeah, really non island or non uh, mountain basics. Yeah, I, th I think I really like taking that Tribe Elder too, Marshall. Yeah. Yeah, because now he's gonna have at least yeah you know, yeah at least one color of mana that he needs. There's an S champion in hand for Svi. Now that Mox Opal is not active. Yeah, and not really the sickest draw from Svi's side. Just a lot of lands. He's got a thought, a thought cast. <laughs> it currently costs three and a U. Yeah, <laughs> that's more than divination. All right, activate that. No, I think he's playing Springleaf Drum. Oh, he's just gonna play a Springleaf Drum. Okay, is the judge saying something? Is um, Joe getting up? I think he need, maybe needed to go to a restroom break or something. All right. Well, let's okay, uh, let's. Follow? get back to the uh, other match. Yeah, maybe we case. can pop over to the other one real quick just uh, while we're on a break here from our main one. We'll have uh, we'll have Rusty keep track of it. Yeah, he had a medical issue. He just he needed to go take care of something, so we'll just go over to the other one. <laughs> All right. See, Marshavitz does that to people, you know. Okay, so it uh, looks like someone just took this game. I can't tell by the right. body language, but they're still uh, I'm shuffling. I'm assuming it's Sam. If yeah, yeah, I don't know that they'd be uh, randomizing if they weren't going to game three. No, they'd probably be throwing those deck boxes against the wall and or hugging their friends. <laughs> 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 we have confirmation, Sam. Yeah, looks like it. They're going to boards. Okay, so we're going to get two game threes here in the semis. Two for two. So I, I'm interested in what you do in the mirror right here. I mean, like, even mind sense are obviously very, very important. That makes me think you want Dismember just yes. to deal with your opponent's Mind Sensor. Yeah, now. It also seems like a mana fight. You know, yeah, they were right. definitely uh, going after each other's mana on different levels there, and Dismember is good at taking out an early uh, mana producer. So that could mean you want to Abrupt Decay. That deals mm -hmm. with Malira, that deals with Viscera Seer, deals with mana creatures, deals with Deathrite Shaman. Which and Mind Sensor. And Mind Sensor, yeah, yeah, yeah. So... Uh, D and McDonald has access to three copies of Abrupt Decay. Uh, Party has two in the main deck. McDonald has zero in the main deck. Uh, four Thoughtseize from Party potentially after sideboard. Uh, McDonald main decking two Thoughtseize, but does not have access to any more than that. That is very important for taking Birthing Pod and Court of Calling and disrupting the combo a little bit. Or, sorry, no, 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 he, uh, McDonald does have two more copies of Thoughtseize, so that they can equalize on that post-board. Really, McDonald and Party have fairly different main decks in terms of what they're prioritizing, but after sideboarding, they can present essentially the same configuration. Okay. So it's going to be a... And I think Party uh, or McDonald has one more Abrupt Decay or something, uh, but uh, by and large, okay. essentially the same configuration. So this is going to be, well, Mulligans is going to be an important piece of the puzzle here as there's going to be some key cards that these guys are going to need, and if they don't find them, okay? or who yeah. finds them first, I should say. Remember, these are also birthing pod decks, right? Like, you can turn your two-drop into an Avon Mind Sensor as well. 
I think you kind of want to just get the dream draw. Hope your opponent has two birds and just Orzhov Pontiff them both away mm. and uh, not have to be burdened with playing a game of magic. <laughs> <laughs> All right, like so action happening over here. Uh, if I, I still, I don't know how I feel about letting your opponent have access to Sakura Tribe Elder. Yeah. I mean, it is. I, I mean, to be fair, if Zvi's plan is to lean on his Nexuses and he does have two in his hand, yes. he might say, "All right, I'm going to take your Izzet Charm." Yep. Yeah. Uh, with your other one, once you use it, I know you cannot deal with my lands. You That's just can't right. do anything about them. Right. And so I can just, you know, I can put. Uh, Arcbound Ravager counters on them. I can put Cranial Platings on them, and I just do not have to worry about what you're going to try to do to me. Yeah, you know, and that, that is a viable plan, and it also reflects what he has if he's going to try to poison out his opponent here. All right. Looks like we didn't miss much over here. No, nah, I don't think so. So, uh... Uh, you know, Blood Moon would actually still probably be pretty good for Zvi right here. It would turn off his Nexus. It would be very unfortunate, but, uh... You know, it, it would it would totally deprive Demestrio of green mana. All right, Etch Champion here for Sri Uh Yeah. Conveniently the third artifact yes. to turn on Metalcraft. <laughs> That's right. And it looks like, are we still, still going to see the Thoughtcast finally? Yep. yep, there it is. You know, Thoughtcast actually, uh, you know, almost every deck we've seen on the Spotlight here has played four copies of it. Was not a universal inclusion, though, in the, especially the early days of Monarch. You saw a mm -hmm. lot more red based affinity decks Absolutely. with Galvanic Blast. Uh, and and uh, the Thought Seize actually, or Thoughtcast actually getting Is It Charmed, countered by the Spell Pierce ability. Wow. Which, uh, not always That's what you aggressive. See. You know, I'm wondering. I, I wonder how sad Svi is about that. He might be happy. Yeah, I mean, uh, that means his Ink Moth is or his Blink Moth is going to get in. His Ink Moth could get in if he wants it to. Uh, so I mean, he's at the bare minimum dealing three damage a turn now. But mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I, at the same time, Cranial. Uh, sorry, at Champion is really a threat primarily in concert with Arcbound Ravager, Cranial Plating. That's right. And and to a lesser extent, Steel Overseer. So if Svi cannot dig to those cards. Uh huh. Demestrio just it might say, okay, I can, you know, look, I can afford to take three damage a turn. Yep. You know, I've got Scape Shift to kill you. I've got Primeval Titan, which can kill you. Okay, Signal Pest for Swimashovitz. He has one more card in his hand. Yeah, so... Uh, Activate both of my lands. Attack, attack, attack. Hybrid victory. Mm -hmm. You never know when you might fall back on that poison plan here. Yeah, so. exactly. So uh, Demestrio, uh, potential access to six mana right now. We might see Primeval Titan hit the board, and that does not spell good news for Zvi. All right, he is going to crack this. That does signal that he might have a Primeval Titan. As that gives him the sixth mana. And yeah, that gives him five Here mountain. it is, Titan time. So if he goes and gets two Valakuts, that means next turn he can deal 12 damage on the attack, plus six from Primeval Titan is lethal, That's assuming right. Zvi doesn't have any blockers. On the other hand, you can get a single Valakut and throw three damage at something. You have a lot of options right here. It looks like he has one Valakut and what is that oh. other card? Steam Vents or something? Yeah, it's a Steam Vents. Okay, so I, I think he's uh, going to try to capitalize on the Bolt right here, maybe just by getting rid of Signal Pest, knowing next turn he can get a Valakut and another land deal six. Okay. Oh, he but might uh, be changing his mind. I really like getting two Valakuts right here. And just threatening death. Yeah. I mean, he's at 16. It's not like Svi has any plays, or at least very few plays available to him that... I mean, I don't know if Svi can do 16 in one turn from this standpoint, but I doubt it. Right. I mean, the other thing that uh, getting two Valakuts does is if you top deck a mountain just off the top of your deck, it allows you to just deal six next turn. Mm -hmm. I think he's getting two Valakuts yeah, here. Yeah, I like that a lot. He's doing some math. Also means you don't draw a Valakut, which is not exactly what you want to happen. It's not that That's a good bad. point. I mean, you'd much rather draw a mountain. That's a good point. Yeah. Okay, there it is. He's, he's like, doing. we're doing it. Uh, he's like, look, way, I'm at 16. Six, six You're six not going to kill, kill me. In case you were wondering. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know what's going on there. I saw one card. All right, this is a normal thing, by the way, guys, it happened. Uh, C went to draw his card, and he accidentally lifted up the second one. Now, this is not the same thing as having drawn a card. That has to actually touch your hand. You basically you see, saw a card that he wasn't supposed to see, and so they just need to make sure that they uh, take care of it here with the judge real quick. It's usually just a warning. Yeah. All right, so uh, 
So Z also, no real way to remove that Primeval Titan. So he needs to end the game quickly this turn because he knows that next turn he's facing 12, potentially 18 damage, yeah. plus 6 from the Primeval. Yeah. I'm telling you, I really like Demestrio's build. It just it, it seems it, it, super it, it, well suited. It deals with the problem a lot of scape ship decks have. You're like, okay, you have Farseek, you have Secure Tribe, you have Search for Tomorrow. What are you ramping into? Right. Yeah, you, know, you don't always draw your scape ship. That's I mean, right. Like, you can do a bunch of work with like peer through depths and things like that to try and draw your scape shift. Uh huh. But why not just play a card that wins you the game by itself? Right. And is just a creature that gives you all your advantage yeah. for you. Yeah, I really like it too. As opposed to trying to force through one single spell. And it alleviates some of those pains that the regular scape shift, the, the more blue-based one has as well, about running out of mountains or right. trying to manage that whole situation. I mean, there's we've seen some matches here, and I've heard about some matches where people gained a decent chunk of life, and they realized, I just can't kill Yeah, I just kill can't them. kill you. Yeah. Just don't have and, like, they didn't have any other way. Right. It wasn't, I mean, like, secure tribe elders aren't going to do it. Maybe <laughs> Titan will, so. Right. No, that's a really good point. Yeah, you attack a few times with that guy, he does some work. Okay, All right. so Svia is going to combat here. He's activated both of his man lands. He's going to attack with one, two, three, four creatures here. There's going to be a trigger from Signal Pass that's going to give everybody plus one, plus zero. So that's five points of regular damage and two points of infect damage. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think Demestrio is showing him Secure Tribe Elder plus the attack that's going to be lethal. Yep, and that's going to be lethal. And wow. Svimoshevitz extends the hand. Yeah, he's just working him through exactly why it's All right, lethal. so, well, but Joe is actually explaining that he had lethal on board if that attack is made by Svi. But yeah. anyway, Joe is going to, Joe Demestrio, he's going to advance to the finals here in Portland. And uh, let's see, uh, is the other match still going? We're going to bump, we're going to bump over to that match now, and we're going to catch, uh, hopefully, most of the other game three. All right. And this is a board state. Uh, <laughs> Whoa, okay, this is one to walk into here. So now we see Lin Vala, Keeper of Silence. Very important card in the Super mirror match right important. here. Uh, even Mind Sensor, the other really important card in the mirror match. Lin Vala wow. means that Viscera Seer, Cartel Aristocrat, Blood Throne Vampire, none of those cards have abilities. That's right. Oh, it looks like, uh, I think Lin Vala is going to get yeah, yeah, yeah. legend ruled here. The famous cloning a legend yes. means that... Both of them die. But uh, the Mind Sensor is still a pretty relevant card. Now, that said, uh, Murderous Redcap can off that Mind Sensor at will. Yes. So if, par if Party has any way to tutor up a Malira, that might be game right Yeah. Now, he doesn't currently have a Birthing Pod on the table I, here. I do think he has Court of Calling in his hand, though. Okay. So it looks like, but uh, I, I mean, I'm If he I'm has not sure. Court of Calling, one, two, three, one, and he only needs to get a Malira? Oh, but that's the thing, right? Right. So if he, if but he court of calling, if he sacks murderous redcap to kill even mind then sensor, then he does it. Then it's going to have a counter on it. Right. He can cord for infinite life. Yes. Or nearly infinite life, but that allows Dan to go over the top with infinite. Plus one damage. That's right. Oh, and it looks like I think Dan attacked with his Aven Mind Sensor, and Sam played one of his own here. Wow. That he is blocks. okay. He's so blocking. If he, if he blocks and they die, that is game over, I think. Now, does but but can Sam Party cast Court oh, of Calling? Yeah, or does he have to untap he here? An, yeah, he needs. He is one mana short of Court of Calling. So one, two, yeah. All right. Here's a Kitchen Finks. Not super relevant. There's a Court of Calling. He's gonna. He get taps all his guys just to make sure. Here's Malira, yep. and DMAC extends the hand. Sam Party into the finals. Huge win. Uh, that, uh, here I in mean, Portland. He, uh, that attack from the Aven Mind Sensor, I mean, Party's at five, so it's really hard to give up that damage. Yes. But it does walk you into an ambush from a flying blocker it if does. he has it. Now, I mean, Party only has, I, I think, one copy of Aven Mind Sensor after sideboarding. So, I mean, you can't really expect him to have it in his hand, but no. it turned out to be huge. It did. That's exactly but, you know, what happened. But, you know, you also mentioned this, Zach, that he was in a really bad spot because, sure, I I if he wanted, he can kill the Aven Mind Sensor right. whenever he wants. Now, it does mean that he doesn't get to go off with infinite damage, but the life is still there. The well, life is still there. But they do have to pick a number, and remember, this in this matchup, he actually can do th 300 <laughs> trillion damage if he decides he wants to. So, yeah, really tight spot there, 
and Sam Party, as you can see on the right-hand side of your bracket there with Malirapod, makes it into the finals, defeating DMAC. Uh, and on the other 